Hello, uh, this is a video tutorial for PySyndy -E graphical user interface. Uh, if you have no idea what PySyndy -E is, uh, it is basically a uh, Python package that could be used for uh, nonlinear system identification. Uh, it implements Cindy uh, and Cindy C algorithms, which was uh, introduced by Stu Brunton and his colleagues in 2016. Uh, the algorithm basically recovers the uh, governing equations of a uh, dynamic system from uh, measured data. Uh, I won't go into too much detail about the algorithm itself uh, in, this, in this tutorial, uh, but it is highly recommended that you read the uh, original literature about this uh, very simple uh, uh, yet very effective method. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I will try to identify two systems uh, in, this, in this tutorial. Uh, using some uh, simulated data. One is a uh, system called Lorenz system, uh, which is basically a nonlinear system and also chaotic. Uh, another one is a uh, first order linear filter that is basically a system with uh, external control. Okay, so first let's start with the uh, Lorenz system. Uh, first of all, we need to load the, the measured data uh, that's stored in a CSV file uh, of the Lorenz system. Uh, in the Git repository, I've attached a few files. Uh, you can find it from data, and then let's select Lawrence first, and then click OK, and then you will see that all the av available channels in the CSV files are, so, uh, are listed in the list box, and uh, you can also plot them by clicking on them, and you can also disable them here. Uh, let, let's just plot X. For now, oops. Data we need to uh, kind of label them. Uh, first of all, we need to define the time series. Uh, there are two ways to define them. One is uh, to use a constant time step, and the other one is uh, that we can select a channel from the uh, the CSV file because uh, we have this uh, time channel here. So we just use uh, from channels and time. And one thing I did here is basically if I identify any channel name that's called time, then I will automatically select time. And then let's uh, also add some states um, uh, to the uh, on, to the to Cindy basically. Uh, let's select X and then add. Select the Y and add. Select Z, add. Okay, so once we define our states. Uh, the next step is that we need to uh, select the the feature libraries for our uh, for our system. Uh, there are three uh, available feature libraries uh, already. One is called Polynomial, one is called Fourier, and the other one is called Identity. Uh, polynomial means that you want to use polynomials as your governing equations in your system, and you can also change the degree of these. Uh, polynomials. You can also uh, select states in the interaction terms, and also only state terms and things like that. Uh, for Fourier, uh, basically you can include sine waves and cosine waves uh, with like different frequencies and also identity. Uh, you can also combine them by check the uh, enable uh, checkbox uh, for those things. Uh, but for this Lorenz system, uh, we kind of know the structure, uh, so we will only uh, enable the other polynomial and disable those things here. And uh, yeah, let's keep the degree to be three. And uh, next is that uh, you will need to set up your optimizers. Uh, usually the default settings will be fine. Uh, so let's try to fit the model. And you will see that after the model is fitted, uh, it will generate a score. Uh, the maximum number, uh, the maximum value of the score is actually one. Um, the higher the score, it means the uh, the closer the fitted equations uh, uh, is to your uh, original system. So the score is like point zero point nine nine nine, which means uh, it fits pretty well. Uh, and also it generated the uh, the equations text. So if you look at the uh, the actual Lorenz uh, uh, system, it will look almost identical actually. 
And once a model is uh, fitted, you can also try to simulate the model. Yeah, and then you will see the uh, um, that the uh, the channels or the states uh, of your simulated fitted model. You can click on them and compare it with the uh, the original data. So, for example, this is the uh, the X of the uh, the fitted system, and you will see that. Um, it fits pretty well um, before the seventh second, and then you see a bit of uh, deviations uh, here, because uh, just because this is a, a Lorentz system, so we will, uh, it's very sensitive to parameters and, and initial conditions. Um, but yeah, this is basically a uh, uh, the procedure for. A system without external inputs and next I will uh, try to uh, load the data of a, a first order filter which has an external system uh, external input all right so let's load the uh, uh, the first order filter CSV file click OK and uh, same thing the time is automatically selected and then let's go to states and the state of the first order system is actually the uh, first order dot y channel and click add and uh, there's also an input um, channel uh, if you want to see the data how the data looks like it's actually a, a step function uh, the data is a bit clipped here let me plot this as well so you will see the uh, this um, the step input and also the state response Let's add the input, add it here, and then the same thing. We will only use polynomials here, and uh, keep all the default values for the uh, the optimizers. And click model. As you can see, that the fitted uh, score is pretty high, zero point nine nine three, uh, and the system looks something like this. Uh, yeah, let me expand this a little bit. So you will see that there's actually a second order term for the uh, for the input, and uh, we know that this is actually not identical to the original system, but actually uh, it's pretty close uh, based on our data. And we can try to even simulate uh, this uh, system and try to plot it and compare it with the original data, and then we will see that it's actually pretty pretty close. Uh, but if we want to make it exact we can actually reduce the the degree because we know that this is just a first order system and uh, with a linear input so uh, we can try to fit it again and then this is another fit and uh, the fitted score is almost identical actually and then we can try to simulate it and then plot it again actually let's clear it um, um, and then plot again see the data fit pretty well all right thanks for watching this is uh that's it